Good morning, everyone. As you heard, uh, I'm Julius Kibwagi. I'm an architect. I've been a practitioner for the last uh, 33 years, going to 34. And uh, since then, all that time, I've been with Triad Architects, where I still am. I'm a partner there. Uh, the theme of this uh, seminar is sustainable professional practice in the built environment. And uh, my topic uh, that I'm covering within that uh, theme is ethical issues in professional practice. Uh, let's have an overview uh, of what I'm going to present. Uh, I'll touch on arbitration in the industry, uh, the reasons and the causes. Uh, I will look at the overview of past cases on supplanting, fraud, professional corruption, architectural competitions, and, and others. Uh, and then I'll, I'll wrap up by summarizing uh, with reflections on, common, on the common ethical issues and uh, possible interventions. Um, if I can start with uh, arbitration. Now, arbitration is a big topic. Uh, we are actually not going to arbitration uh, particularly. That's a topic of its own for another day. Uh, but I'll just touch it uh, with our viewpoint, uh, looking at uh, professionalism and ethics. Uh, just a, a simple, uh, uh, a simple, uh, no phrase uh, about uh, uh, arbitration. Um, it's a legal mechanism used in dispute re resolution. In many instances, it is preferred because it is a quicker, it's a cheaper, it's a it's, it's private and probably, probably more friendly than going to open court. Uh, the protagonists also have a more direct control of the process. Generally, there will be an independent arbitrator, in our case, normally appointed uh, as per the terms of the contract. And usually this person is nominated by the Institute of Arbitrators or the Architectural Association of Kenya. Vast majority of cases in the industry, in the building industry, uh, arbitration cases or issues, are largely between uh, contractors and clients, or contractors and subcontractors. Sometimes clients and consultants, or consultants and developers. Uh, rare, uh, these are a little rarer, sometimes, uh, consultants and consultants. Uh, but common issues for all of them is abandonment of projects, delayed payments, poor construction, uh, delays in completion, or poor delivery of services. Those are the key issues. There are, there are also a few others. Now, where does ethics and good professional practice come in? Firstly, let us agree, as a practitioner, an architect, a quantity surveyor, even engineers, no one wants their project to end up in arbitration. It is a stain on your reputation, particularly if you are the cause or you are part of the problem that you know led up to that arbitration. Uh, it uses up energy, time, and effort that could be better spent elsewhere. Arbitration slows down or completely stalls what would have been otherwise been a well done and satisfying project or delivery of services. We as professionals can play our part to avoid matters ending up in arbitration by doing some of the following. Ensure well-designed uh, projects, ensure well pro uh, properly executed documents on your part, uh, drawings, specifications, and bills of quantities, whatever is the service that we are delivering. These deliverables must be on time for various other parties who are going to act on them to also do their bit. Uh, your supervision and inspections of uh, construction sites must be consistent, they must be professional and adequately resolved. Do not send juniors who are ill-prepared for that assignment. Ensure that the person who goes is adequate for that assignment. Do not ignore the time you need for proper supervision and be too busy chasing other work. Agree those inspection schedules, agree the approval schedules, and ensure that they happen on time. Evaluations and certificates that uh, we produce must be accurate, they must be done on time. Uh, 
expect high standards of delivery from your contractors and ensure that it happens. You as a consultant, it is your duty to ensure that such contractors, subcontractors, suppliers, whoever you follow up, they are also living up to their part. Fellow consultants as well, who you are working with, do not accept shortcuts or substandard work from them. The reports and minutes that we produce must be captured accurately. Uh, the reports, even the minutes, must give out potential problems and challenges that need to be addressed. They need to be anticipated and properly dealt with. Uh, many a, a time we have client interferences that uh, give us, uh, you know, create problems. This must be well managed. You do get design changes, you get uh, clients who want to deliver the materials. All this has to be properly managed to ensure that there are no problems that come thereafter, no delays. As a consultant, as a professional, do not take bribes or any other enticement to accept or overlook substandard work from others, be they contractors, your fellow consultants, and even clients themselves. We have elements in client organization who thrive on shortcuts and make you no know, cuts out of those shortcuts. Proper and thorough selection, nomination, and appointment of contractors is very important. Ensure that the right contractors for the job are appointed. Uh, ensure that this process is well managed to give you the best chance of a well-delivered project, trouble-free. Ensure contracts are properly drawn, uh, properly executed, they are thoroughly prepared, and anticipate all aspects of the project. So these are some of the issues that we need to deal with uh, to avoid our projects ending up in uh, arbitration. Uh, it's very important to be professional and to be very ethical in all that we do. Uh, let me also uh, you know, uh, go a little further and, uh, and give you an idea of cases that uh, we handled when I was serving at the board. I had a term of three years, uh, some years back. And I'll highlight some of them to just to give us an idea of what we are talking about. Uh, supplanting. What is supplanting? This is one of the most common complaints that uh, we received at the board. Supplanting is where professional architects, professionals, architects and quantity surveyors and others accept a commission that another fellow professional was previously engaged. And there was no termination or the termination was not properly completed to mutual satisfaction. This is actually against Bylaw 45, uh, Part 3, Section P. In the, in the three years that I served uh, in the board, um, um, where I was chair of ethics, we handled about six such cases and complaints, mostly from the injured practitioner who may not have been terminated to their satisfaction or had his fees paid uh, to the stages that uh, he had uh, attained in that project. It is your duty, if you are being uh, appointed to such a job, inquire from your client, was there a previous consultant? And if there is, have you sorted it out with them? Uh, when taking over a project from this previous consultant, it is important that you also get a letter from that consultant uh, that was terminated, ensuring that their fees were sorted or any other matter that were pending was also sorted. And at the very least, please get their consent to proceed. Uh, we also know that there are naughty clients who hope from one client, from one consultant to another, without revealing that they have previously engaged others. So we must be very careful and vigilant because these situations are there. Um, let's move to fraud. Um, fraud or corruption, mm, no, grand corruption the way we know it, is something that is very uh, pervasive in our society. But for some reason, these are not commonly reported to the board. But we generally know 
how prevalent they are in, soci in our society. From the newspapers we read, public accounts committee reports, the auditor general reports, the various court cases going on, and even in our own grapevines we hear, we know what is happening. Fraud is where a practitioner, one ex a good example of fraud, where a practitioner colludes with a contractor, a supplier, the client, fellow consultants, or even staff in the offices, separately or collectively with all of them, purporting, uh, purporting by creating a payment certificate that the aspect of that construction has been delivered while knowing fully well that it has not. And you know, go further and cause the payments to be done, to be effected, and share in those illegal proceeds. We know this, this happens. And we have to be very careful about this. While I served in the board for those three years, we handled one such case where an architect, and actually in the private sector, an architect issued a certificate for payment only for the funding bank uh, to find out later in a, in, a, in a later audit that that building was never actually built. Yeah? All this was corruption. This kind of corruption is hitting our economy big time. It has become an accepted way of life in government departments, both national and in the counties. It has even crept into the private sector. We have companies where procurement officers ask, what is the need for me? if I get you this job. This has to stop, not just to save our profession, but the whole economy as well. Professional corruption. Uh, these are misconduct matters that are uh, also pervasive in our profession, where practitioners you know, deliberately lower their guard, they deliberately lower their integrity to gain some advantage or get away from some failure in their services. I'll mention some examples that we handled in my time. Um, against uh, bylaw 45, uh, section three, verse three, we dealt with uh, four such cases where, uh, the, 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 where, where there was, uh, you know, people who went against their standards, and uh, we had some complaints. Um, developers complained that services were not properly delivered. Uh, now, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges uh, that we get from our clients and developers who have become used to quacks and uh, non, who are non-professionals charging very low fees. Many of our members survive and get to get to get work, so they are forced to lower their fees as well. Uh, the danger of this is that the quality and high standards, the integrity expected of us, the ethics that is expected of us, professionalism, all drops. Another example uh, where we re we had two complaints. Conflict of interests. Uh, we had uh, situations where consultants doubled up as the contractor, uh, and also, of course, there were the consultant, whether the architect or the country surveyor, without disclosing to the client and without getting approval from the board. It is a requirement that where such a situation happens, you have to get approval from the board. Some of our members who do this are forced to compete with uh, you know, the high level of corruption in, and unscrupulousness in our environment where we have businessmen calling themselves engineers, interior decorators, and many other names. And they offer building services, construction services, at much lower fees and lower standards. So you find that uh, you know, a number of our professionals also are forced to you know, go to the stoop that level to compete and get some work. Um, there are also challenges in advertising. 
uh, as professionals, as uh, cons consultants uh, who are professionals, architects and quantity surveyors, we are limited to what we can advertise about ourselves in the newspapers and even media. Now, where you are in a situation you are not sure uh, how to put uh, uh, an article in the newspaper, please get permission from the board. Uh, while we were serving at the board, there were two complaints against uh, uh, individuals in our profession who had advertised and gone to the press uh, and, and put more information than the limits allow them. And they never sought permission from the board. We also need to guard against this to maintain professional standards expected of professionals uh, like us in the building industry. Uh, let's talk about architectural competitions or design competitions in, in another form. This is an aspect where, where it's also quite sort of common in our industry, uh, where in the in desperation to get work, many practitioners fall prey and knowingly or unknowingly participate in unapproved competitions. Um, this rule is there to ensure uh, professional and ethical practices are maintained, the, matter, the, the process is transparent, and it is applied you know, in a standard way throughout such competitions. It is important for us uh, to know that if we allow this to happen, then it can also come back to haunt us. Uh, now this rule uh, uh, protects our members from exploitation of clients, developers who are not serious or are just seeking ideas, market information or you know, design concepts without paying for them. Because they are there, it happens. We have clients, developers who have all manner of design competitions but they never actually built. But they have wasted a lot of time of consultants. Sometimes these competitions are done to give an appearance of transparency and uh, equitable competition, but generally are skewed towards a favored, but a favored uh, individual uh, or participant. So it is important to ask that promoter, have you got approval? And if they refuse or they don't have, please take care. Do not participate. Ensure that the promoter has obtained the board approval. In my time, uh, when we uh, were in the board, uh, we handled two such cases uh, where uh, the, the complainants you know, brought uh, the matter to our attention uh, that uh, these professionals have participated uh, in unauthorized design competitions. Now, there are various other professional misconducts um, uh, which are not clear-cut as the ones above, but they are there, they are misconducts. I'll go through some of them. I've grouped them in the following uh, uh, four or five examples. Failure to, uh, to deliver agreed services. Uh, we handled two such cases in my time. Uh, this was, uh, the complainant was a client, not very happy, we engaged the professionals and they didn't deliver. It is misconduct of you as a consultant, as a consultant not to de deliver your services in the expected manner, in the expected duration and at the desired, at, at the required quality. If a contractor delays because you are late in providing details, uh, you are late in providing uh, approval of samples, uh, you didn't provide the valuations or the payment certificates on time, that is misconduct. So hold yourself very high, do your duties to the expected high quality standards, high integrity that is expected of you. Withholding of fees for other consultants is another aspect. Many a time we work as a, in a consortium where the fees are paid to the consortium leader and then distributed to others to the others. It is misconduct of you if you receive these fees and then fail or delay in passing them on. 
This largely applies to architects, but also in a few cases where the QSS are uh, project manager or team leader. Uh, we had such two cases uh, that uh, where the complaints were, were, were written to us, and uh, it was actually to two architects, um, where, of course, they, 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 they didn't pay the other consultants on time. This, by the way, uh, uh, as, 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 as we, we come to more recent times, I think the problem is pervasive. And uh, we are seeing uh, a lot of architects misuse their hold of our other consultants who are beholden to them and may desperate to sort of maintain a relationship. So let's guard against this. This is professional misconduct. Stamping of drawings uh, and other submissions for non-registered practitioners. This is also misconduct. There was one such case in our time uh, but even if it was one, I can assure you, we all know that this is a pervasive problem. It is extensive, even today. It's an open secret. We have so many local quacks, a growing number of foreign firms, not qualified to practice in Kenya, but are getting their projects approved and built with the help of some of our members who collude and enable this to happen. They stamp their drawings. We know that uh, there is a requirement for any foreign uh, input into uh, our country where it is justified must be a, allow a 40% component that is local. So just rubber stamping is professional misconduct. You are enabling corruption to happen. Um, the problem is extensive where we see poor construction lack of proper designs, collapsing buildings, and unacceptable urban, unplanned urban sprawl, particularly in our poor neighborhoods. In the high-end neighborhoods of our cities and towns, we see a surge in high-rise apartments, office buildings, upmarket housing, and you name it, with little or no local design in it. Yeah? Consultants from outside the country know, come with a lot of freedom and they do what they want to do. We, as, an, as professionals in the industry, must play our part to stop this trend. We need to protect ourselves. Play GRism. This is where you copy someone else's designs. We had one such complaint where an architect copied another's drawings and designs and actually implemented them. While it is not a widespread complaint, but it is completely unethical and not acceptable uh, in the profession. So those are examples of uh, various unethical uh, practices that we must all guard against and ensure that we deliver our services to high level of integrity and ethical practice. Now, let me just to summarize uh, uh, where we are and what we need to do, reflecting on various common issues and possible interventions to correct this. We as professionals in the industry, we need to accept that there is a pro common problem. We have accepted law, lowering our ethical standards, our professionalism, and generally we are trending in the wrong direction. Yes, this is a mirror of the society we live in. There is pervasive corruption. But if we don't deal with it collectively, we and our future generations will continue spiraling downwards. So we have to sort of, you know, accept that this problem is there and start dealing with it. Let us educate ourselves thoroughly at our personal level, in our practices, the consortiums we work with, maintaining high integrity standards, high standards of ethics and professionalism. We must get support from our board, our professional institu institutions, uh, who must also uh, uh, institute programs of rele relevant and attractive CPDs and other material to ensure that we are educated 
and we know where we are. Um, the industry, we in the industry must interact with each other. I know a lot of times we are holed up in our own sort of private cocoons, but we must reveal what is happening and have forums where we can interact and help keep ourselves in check. And these must be professional forums uh, from our institutes and, and borax as well. Now, the board, the borax, um, I know there, there, there has been, you know, um, sort of a lot of demands uh, on, on borax, but we have to accept that for borax to be effective, we must support it to increase its capacity to oversee the profession. We are being flooded by overseas practitioners in the construction industry. Uh, Borax needs to find a way to get feedback, uh, not just from the practitioners, but even at, uh, uh, in, in, at, at, the, at the approving authorities, the counties. Uh, Borax must have capacity at the county level, and virtually all of them, to be able to know who is building, who is getting things approved, and are they actually app approvable. Uh, mechanisms to monitor and oversee who is this that is practicing have to be enhanced. And we would suggest that uh, uh, we in the profession, uh, both uh, from our institutions, professional institutions, and our board, Borax here, uh, need to liaise us with other uh, authorities, the local authorities, departments at the national level that deal with immigration and trade to find a way why is it that foreigners can just walk in uh, and some of those uh, will agree are some of the reasons why some of our standards are actually dropping for us to compete uh, and, and even for projects that are built that are not built up to standard. Uh, we also need to update uh, some of our bylaws to catch up with you know, modern reality. There are many areas and aspects of our profession that have changed and move, moved on, and we need to you know, embrace what is good, we need to embrace. Uh, what needs to be done away with, needs to be done away with. And that has to be a continuous process. With that, I come to the end of the presentation. I want to thank you for listening to me. I welcome any questions.